Hello and welcome back to another session on methodology of literature. This time, this video is, most, is on the first module and we will pick it up, pick up from where we stopped in the last class, that is the, uh, the section where we spoke about Renissa and the Elizabethan poetry. We started with the Tudor dynasty and we came up to the six wives of Henry and now we begin with Queen Mary uh, or Queen Mary the first, the Queen of England, otherwise famously or infamously referred to as Bloody Mary. Now Queen Mary, her mother Catherine of Aragon was the wife, the first wife of Henry VIII and was the longest reigning or longest queen of Henry, who was the uh, wife or the longest uh, reigning queen of Henry uh, when we look at the other wives of Henry VIII. She was, uh, Mary was the only surviving child in that marriage and she was brought up as a spoiled royal princess and later she was, a, when she was a teenager, her mother is deserted by her father. She is packed back to Spain and their marriage is annulled. The child is traumatized and she is nobody to her father. Now that Henry is dead, this was her only chance to get back what, she, what was hers, that is the throne of England. Do remember, Catherine was a Spanish Catholic and Protestant church came only with Henry VIII and he moved the, uh, the Church of England from the rule of or from the Catholic Church which was under the Pope only to get his marriage annulled and to establish himself as the sovereign both of the, of the uh, country England and also as the head of the Church uh, of England. Thus her anger towards the Protestants was immense. One, her, for the reason was one was the, her anger towards her own father who was responsible for his mother's uh, dissertation or who was responsible for whatever has ha whatever happened to her mother and uh, the reason another reason is that Mary was brought up as a staunch Catholic Spain was a Catholic uh, uh, kingdom which was under the rule of the Pope and therefore when she returned to the throne of England uh, she became or she decided to give back or put the uh, put back the true Catholic Church under the Pope or she decided to put the or put an end to the Anglican Church and bring back Catholicism to uh, England that is uh, to make England a Catholic Church under the Pope. She was also in love with Philip II of Spain and he was her cousin from her mother's side. She thus therefore marries him. Philip II is from Spain and Spain again is a true Catholic country that follows Pope. But the English people were very independent and Spain was always their arch enemy or they were long, uh, they, they hated each other. Remember Henry VIII, the father of uh, Henry VII, that is uh, the father of Henry VIII, the main reason uh, to set or uh, why he got his son Arthur to marry uh, Catherine of Aragon, the first, the first uh, uh, son of Henry VII before Henry VIII, uh, was only to establish uh, or maintain peace with Spain, which was a very powerful uh, kingdom at that time. Now with Henry VIII, things have been upset. Spain became the arch enemy of England. First, their princess is packed and sent back to Spain. The Spanish people, they get very annoyed with 
uh, King Henry VIII uh, and therefore they once again become the arch enemy of England. Thus their marriage and laws of the time also meant that Philip, if that when if at all Philip becomes the king, so people in England that they according to their law, according to their custom, the people in England will have a Spanish king. If they have uh, Queen Mary as their queen, then Prince Philip will not be called Prince Philip. Rather, he becomes the king uh, all along with uh, Queen Mary. So they will have a Spanish king. This was not liked by the people. They did not like that idea. They uh, just hated or resented the idea. There, was, there were a lot of protests and revolt. The people had already started uh, embracing Protestantism as their faith and they did not want it or they did not want to return to Catholicism. Mary decided to cut a fight back on this and she ended up ordering the execution of nearly 300 Protestants. There were a lot of roundups, tortures, burnings, uh, etc. and she became what we call her as Bloody Mary because of the bloodshed that created that she created. This was because of the torture and the bloodshed that she unleashed during this period. When now after Queen Mary, uh, she dies. Uh, one, I think I. It did go wrong somewhere when I spoke about the Tower of England. I would like to correct myself uh, because I did say that Queen Mary was also beheaded. No, Queen Mary did, was not beheaded or executed. She died because of some ailments. She died because of some stomach ailment. Uh, she had high fever and she succumbs to that disease. So uh, uh, after her death, uh, Queen uh, Mary's death maybe it was a kind of flu also but we do not know for sure uh, it, it finally uh, the people had or they turned back to the uh, next child of Henry the eighth and that was Queen Elizabeth remember Elizabeth's mother was Anne Boleyn and Anne Boleyn was hated by the people and she was finally executed by the people of England itself. So, but, and she was executed for what? For what reason was imposed or what was that charge imposed on her or posed on her? That would be the right uh, word. What was the charge? She was charged of adultery. So there is a lot of people who believe that Elizabeth was an illegitimate child and uh, to, uh, that was born to Anne uh, Boleyn and she was not uh, Henry VIII's dot, true daughter. But Elizabeth, though people did speak about her in that way, that she's an illegitimate child and not born to Henry VIII, uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth uh, was the splitting image of her father. She had her father's red hair, good looks and his intelligence. One thing she had done was to watch her father carefully her whole life. The mistakes the people had made. She was really smart and uh, she was a keen observant. And when she finally ascended to the throne, she decided not to marry. The uh, biggest mistake that uh, Mary made was to marry someone whom the people hated. She became, therefore, she decided not to marry and she became known as the Virgin Queen. She did have many lovers uh, and romances, but uh, that's another part of the story. That's another part of history. We're not going to go, go into it. Uh, we have even some of the greatest works uh, written about uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth's uh, love affair, like you have Kenilworth. Uh, it's, it does have a portion where they speak about, uh, where uh, uh, Scott it, uh, speaks about uh, Queen uh, uh, Elizabeth's love affair. Uh, 
but we are not going to de go deep into it. And so, uh, she being a keen observant, she watching her father carefully, the mistakes that her father made and also the mistakes that her sister made, she uh, decided to correct all those mistakes and she decided to win the hearts of the people and be the pe uh, people's mon uh, queen or the people's monarch. monarch. So she became the sole regent of uh, England and the last Tudor of the line. She was very well educated like Henry. She was smart and she was intelligent. She became a strong supporter of arts and she ruled for so long that the entire age became known by her name as Elizabethan age. Now Elizabethan age is also referred to as the golden age of literature. So uh, she uh, not just literature but of the entire history. It was the golden age of England as such. She re-established the idea of Church of England but she insisted on religious moderation. She decided to be a Protestant partially because of what she believed. Of course she also believed in Protestantism but also because it was politically correct thing to do. She uh, being the head of the church, she controls uh, uh, other than letting the Pope control uh, uh, the uh, matters of the church. And therefore, it was a politically good move from her part to uh, become a Protestant. But of course, she believed in Protestantism, but she also became a Protestant because she was strong in her belief as a Protestant because she would, politically, because she would be the uh, head of the uh, Church of England and not the Pope. And she, being a moderate uh, person, she allowed those who wanted to be Catholics. She made herself a popular monarch, both to the Catholics and the Protestants of the country. She may not have promoted Catholics in her court, of course, though she was moderate in her court. We fi often find uh, Protestants, most of the Protestants in her court, uh, she did not promote Catholics but she was tolerant towards them and she did not uh, 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 persecute uh, them. Uh, she also had a strong enemy at that time. Uh, she was able to rally the whole country against and fight the domination of the French and also the Spanish. Uh, probably uh, the main victory was the defeat of the Spanish Armada. Now, we, you have it in your textbook. It is mentioned about the Spanish Armada. Now, it was all about, uh, uh, you know, uh, Queen Mary's mother, Catherine of Aragon, the first wife of King, uh, King Henry VIII. Uh, she was packed back and to Spain, their marriage was annulled and thus uh, Spain becomes the arch enemy of England. Uh, not just that, with the coming of Queen uh, Mary uh, to the throne of England, Prince Philip uh, had to go back to Spain or, or sorry, uh, became the Spanish King of England. But with Mary's death, uh, uh, King uh, or Prince Philip had to go back to uh, Spain uh, and uh, the Spanish uh, they uh, however wanted uh, Prince Philip to take back the throne because they believed that since uh, Philip was married to Queen Mary England belonged to them so he tried to marry Elizabeth First he did it, uh, you know, it he was very clever and he tried to uh, uh, marry uh, Queen Elizabeth but Elizabeth turned down uh, turned him down outrightly and therefore Prince Philip uh, he decided to take back England by force and the Spanish they led the strongest uh, uh, fleet the Spanish Armada uh, and to attack England but again the English Navy was able to defeat them 
partly because of one reason and that was uh, one major reason for the victory of England was a storm. Uh, the, the storm, the violent storm that uh, came up uh, amidst the fight or amidst the battle saved the English people and the victory was theirs and the Spanish Armada was defeated. So the people, what they did, they, they felt this, they felt very proud uh, because they started liking their queen. She was the people's queen. She was, uh, she was uh, a moderate uh, person, she was well educated, they all liked her. So uh, the people saw this as a sign of God which stated Queen as the strong ruler or which stated Queen Elizabeth as the strong ruler of England. And Elizabethan age there was that, that, that period itself was, came to be known under her name. But as we say all good things must come to an end. Then after almost 50 years of uh, throne, Elizabeth dies peacefully. She did her duties well, made England proud and uh, restored it to peace and prosperity. But now and again, the country is faced with the same problem, the dilemma, no heir to the throne. Queen Elizabeth was a virgin queen and she never married. Elizabeth being clever had sought this uh, problem earlier. She worked it out with the parliament and named Scotland's King James to be her successor, one of her cousins and she was, he was the son of Mary Queen of Scot. James was a part of the Stuart family Related, of course, towards were also related to the Tudors, but they were from Scotland. James was a strong Protestant and a supporter of arts. One of King's, King James' long-lasting achievement uh, of uh, uh, the that he gave to the Western civilization was having the Bible uh, rewritten to reflect this kind of non-Catholic point of view and it was written in the language of the people of the time and that thus we have King James version of the Bible. Now uh, other achievements during the English Renaissance let's begin with uh, you know, King Henry the eighth and then up to James the first of England. King Henry VIII was uh, busy uh, settling uh, or getting married and uh, uh, divorcing his wives and uh, you know he was getting uh, going through uh, princes, af princes after princes and finally setting in. Uh, so some of the uh, other events apart from uh, this was that England had actually established some colonies including uh, the Jamestown uh, and Virginia in America, the British, uh, the first successful colonies. So that was one achievement that was uh, possible during King Henry VIII's uh, rule. But he was mostly into this problem of, you know, getting married and then divorcing his wife, uh, wives or getting them executed. So even during that troubled marriage, he was able to make England a maritime country. He was able to, or a strong maritime country and also he was able to establish uh, various colonies. The first uh, successful colonies were established in America, that is the Jamestown. That is very important, especially from the literary point of view. Uh, we will be studying uh, about it when we start American literature, Jamestown and Virginia. Uh, again, there were conflicts uh, about the divine. Next, another uh, important aspect is the uh, conflict over the divine rights of the king apart from uh, the Renaissance movement. It was also a part of the Renaissance movement, you can say. People started, we did discuss that in the beginning of Renaissance. 
uh, people started uh, questioning uh, the church people also started questioning this divine right uh, of uh, the king where the king could do anything according to his whims and fancy he uh, was or uh, he became uh, known as the powerful sovereign uh, uh, of uh, the uh, country uh, and uh, he was the chosen one by God. So because of this divine uh, rights of King James uh, always got into trouble with uh, uh, the Parliament uh, and uh, just uh, because because the Parliament uh, because Queen uh, Elizabeth was able to control she her moderate her uh, intelligence she was a very clever person and therefore she was able to control the Parliament uh, and get things across but James on the other hand lacked that ability he always believed in the divine right of king and that brought him into trouble with the Parliament and uh, the parliament or the people also started questioning just because you are the king doesn't mean that you your uh, son, son should become the king like after James the first you have um, Charles the first who got gets executed and then uh, you know the in um, uh, monarchy it's normally uh, the heir to the next heir to the throne so they wanted uh, a democratic kind of government they were it was the beginning of the fight for you know a democratic kind of uh, uh, government it was the beginning or the, it laid the foundation of western uh, democracy so renissa main uh, that was another important uh, event or another important uh, feature of the renissa the uh, laying the foundation of western democracy Another event before we move on to the uh, 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 Elizabethan poetry or Elizabethan literature, uh, you have to understand uh, the impact of Renissa uh, also. Another event was the beginning of the Puritans who were very strict, very orthodoxic and they were mostly a Catholic sort of uh, a person. They were very orthodoxic. They were not like the Protestants. They were very orthodoxic and uh, they followed uh, a Catholic kind of, that is Catholicism under the Pope. They followed uh, that kind of belief and therefore they got into trouble with the Protestants there. They got into trouble with the King and the Parliament and soon they began to be executed in England because of their extreme faith. So, and therefore the Anglican Church uh, were uh, not much different in their ways of course they were also quite similar in their worship uh, but it, uh, the, and the only difference of the, uh, between the Anglican Church and the Catholic Church was that in Anglican Church the king is the head of the Church of England whereas in the Catholic Church it is the Pope who is the head of the uh, church uh, but that was the only difference because their faith and their beliefs their pattern their worship and all were quite similar <coughs> But the Puritans had a totally different faith. They were very orthodoxic. They were extreme in all cases. Uh, you will find that when you have uh, uh, the uh, uh, Oliver Cromwell come uh, when he takes up uh, or become when he becomes the Lord Protector and how he gets into or uh, how he becomes the most hated person. Though he did uh, establish or his ten years of rule was good uh, he did a lot of good things but he was also an extreme kind of a person and he his uh, uh, he being a puritan uh, made him the most hated person uh, of england also and so uh, because of these persecutions that was happening uh, that were happening in england these people the puritans they left england and came to the new world that is america forming the uh, Plymouth colony in 1620 in the United States. So when we look at the literature of the period, you would understand why they were written. So especially the American uh, literature, when we move to American literature, you will find Puritanism. You will also find uh, the history behind the establishment of these colonies. and. Uh, 
so let's uh, that's uh, with the background of renissa and uh, the elizabethan age uh, 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 and let's move on to the uh, age of uh, or the elizabethan age as of as in literature let's uh, have a quick look into the into the works written during this period now um, Elizabeth, Elizabethan age was a strong period both politically, socially and also in literature and art. Now Elizabethan poetry and drama, if you are to look at Elizabethan poetry and drama, spe specifically or especially in Elizabethan poems, uh, you see the birth of lyric poems. Now lyric poems were are, are poems that have song-like qualities with lots of imagery and figurative language. Sonnet was probably the most uh, popular poetic form and were written about the queen or for the queen. Now art also flourished in, now in almost uh, all uh, time and place in history. When you have at most peace and prosperity, uh, you will see a real rise in the art and science and overall achievement as such. Remember, people had uh, lots of time. They were peaceful, they were not busy uh, surviving or fighting wars uh, or fighting poverty. They were, uh, there was a lot of prosperity because King, uh, Queen Elizabeth was able to restore peace. Uh, if you look at King uh, Henry the Seventh, uh, father to King Henry the Eighth, King Henry the Seventh restored the treasury. It was a rich country, and with the coming of Queen Elizabeth, she made it more popular. She made it a strong powerful nation and therefore there was a lot of peace and prosperity in the country and therefore people had time to uh, think, they had time to invent, they had time to pay attention to arts. So during this time Shakespeare came into recognition, he created a new art form, the Elizabethan sonnet and he named this after the Queen. We have a Shakespearean sonnet or the English sonnet, of course we'll be dealing with, we'll be uh, speaking about Yacht and Surrey. Also, they are the ones who brought sonnet to England from Italy, uh, but it was Shakespeare who popularized it and therefore it was known as Shakespearean sonnet. The English sonnet is often known as Shakespearean sonnet. But uh, uh, Shakespeare had uh, initially named it uh, uh, under or named it after the Queen and it is actually called Elizabethan sonnet or the English sonnet. We also have uh, drama, we also see drama becoming a major form of entertainment, live plays hel helped uh, or held uh, uh, people enthralled. Uh, they were available to everybody. Uh, from the lowest peasant to the royal, that is the queen herself, who is who is said to have uh, known to have, uh, who is said uh, to have attended the plays in disguise. She used to disguise herself uh, so that she could go out in the street and among the people, understand the people better. She even disguised, uh, and she would watch. Uh, you know the place when she would come to watch the place it is said so that uh, she uh, herself used to attend the uh, various drama live plays that were uh, played uh, during that time and uh, coming back to our textbook the Elizabethan age refers I would like you to turn to page number seven the Renaissance and the Elizabethan age now the Renaissance is from the early modern period, is from uh, the 1500 to 1660. The, in English literature it was a phase which began in the early 16th century and lasted up to 1660. 
During this phase, England became a Protestant country in the wake of the Reformation. The medieval universe uh, was replaced by modern Copernican one and literature became secular, proclaiming a quest for knowledge. The works of Shakespeare and Milton are the best examples of humanism which characterize the spirit of the age. All this we had discussed in our video. And then the Elizabethan age, it uh, is a period from 1558 to 1603. Remember the age, the years are very important. M. H. Abrams observes this uh, or that this was a time of rapid development in English commerce, maritime power and nationalist feeling. The defeat of the Spanish Armada, we spoke about King uh, or Prince. Uh, Philip, the Spanish prince, who uh, Queen Mary's uh, husband, who tried to get back England, thinking that it belonged, England belonged, or with the feeling that England belonged to him, it was his rightful, uh, you know, he, uh, it, he, it was uh, something that was uh, his, uh, uh, or sh should be under his control. Uh, and thus we have the Spanish Armada uh, which occurred in 1588. I also told you that uh, the English people came victorious. He tried to marry Queen Elizabeth but she turned down the offer. She, uh, uh, they, then it was like, uh, you know, get the England back by hook or crook. He decided to get it back by force. Uh, he sent his uh, very powerful uh, navy the spanish armada to fight the english navy but a storm saved the english navy uh, from defeat they became the victorious and thus uh, that begins the golden period of uh, uh, england and uh, the queen elizabeth becoming the strongest of the monarchs this period was also known as the golden era of drama uh, which was made so by William Shakespeare, Christopher Marlowe, Ben Johnson and Thomas Kidd. Thomas Kidd, you may have heard of the Spanish tragedy, Thomas Kidd and he's also one of the University of Wit, sometimes considered as one of the University of Wit and sometimes not. There are, of course, deep, they, there are sometimes uh, uh, some histor uh, critics uh, are of the view that he was not considered so some consider him or most uh, as a part of the university wit now Shakespeare however was not a part of the university wit uh, you have studied that in your previous uh, lessons uh, the most important poet of this phase was Edmund Spencer who wrote Prothalamian and Epithalamian, the two great nuptial poems uh, and you have Yacht and Surrey in addition to Sir Philip Sidney who contributed to the development of so some prominent genres like uh, a sonnet and pastoral romance and also you must remember that Philip Sidney can be considered as our first uh, critic uh, uh, the pers per person who started literary criticism, I can co consider him. So he wrote the defense of uh, poesy, uh, he, where he sp spoke about the characteristics of a good writer. Uh, he also started this as a trial of literary criticism in England. Uh, so that's about it for the uh, Elizabethan uh, age. Now comes a small assignment which you will be doing. I will not be helping you. You will have to find out the great poets or during the in, uh, during uh, the Elizabethan times uh, and you will have to write uh, a paragraph on each poet and uh, at name at least five important works of uh, or credited to them. So thank you and happy learning.